this week, taking another break from the apocalypse, and making something fantasy instead. And to add to my kind of Viking themed fantasy style, I'm going to be making a druidic shack. And to start with, made a four wall template out of foam core, and then cut some styrofoam bricks of various sizes, textured them with a tinfoil ball, and then started gluing them down on the front of the foam core. So it's going to be a simple stone and plaster structure with some wooden beams above and then absolutely overgrown with foliage and moss and plants and stuff. I also remember to add a window this time, so I cut a circular hole in one side just so it would be a bit different. To give the walls a kind of cobbled together effect, I made sure all the bricks and stones were of various different sizes, as if they'd been taken from different places or just badly cut in the first place. I did a similar thing with the wooden beams, where I beveled them round so they looked more like timber than straight planks. I also bent a piece of balsa wood by wetting it and then gently forcing it into shape and then letting it fully dry. So it's not perfect, but it's a very rough way of making curved beams. This all got attached via hot glue to the template. I normally put the template together before gluing the stonework and the kind of extra details on, but I wanted to work on it on a flat surface, so I did it kind of half and half, where I did the front panels and then left the edges to be covered later once the walls were attached. You can also strengthen the corner joints by using a large piece of cut stone, making sure it glues onto both surfaces. For the roof, I cut some more pieces of foam core, and cut down the edge of the building slightly so they would fit flush against it, then attaching it with some hot glue. I then trimmed some smaller pieces and fit it over the gap in between the two. For the base I used a mixture of foam core and insulation board, cutting both into ovals, beveling the edges and then gluing them together to give it a bit more height and depth. Once I was happy with the base, I put hot glue on each of the four corners, then glued it down. Using more of the insulation board, I tore it up into rough pieces, then glued it down on the edges, so it would build up the earth against the sides of the building later on when I add the texture paste. Using some balsa wood, I covered the ends of the roof, Then with some pieces of styrofoam, went in, carved them into rocks, so that they could be attached to the base, and build up some rock formations. Once again, using a tinfoil ball to push some stone texture into the styrofoam. With most of the base in place, I mixed up some sculptor mold, about 1 to 1 ratio of water to pulp, and then applied it all over the base, walls and ceiling of the piece. So it could act as the ground layer for the dirt, as well as the plaster on the walls, and the foundation for the turf on the ceiling. To make it look a little bit different, I applied it lumpy on the bases and the ceiling where you would have the turf, while pushing it flatter onto the sides where it would be the plaster. If you let it dry partly, you can easily just wet your finger and then smooth out any areas as well. 
the final application of the sculptor mold was to fill in a bit of the gaps between the stonework. So using a few tiny pieces, just pushing it into the gaps and then scraping off the excess. For the doorway, using another piece of balsa wood, trimming it down to size, then using a steel ruler, push the indentations of planking on the side, as well as a light wood grain. then attaching it to the piece using hot glue. To cover the gaps in the roof where they didn't quite connect to the beams, I took two more pieces of balsa wood, trimmed them down to size, then glued them on. For the basing paste, I used a mixture of black gesso, cork flock, as well as some fine sand. Then mixing this together with a drop or two of water, I then applied it all over the base, as well as on the roof. As well as adding texture, this will cover up any of the weird cracks you get in the sculptor mold, but it will also make the base a lot stronger. While that texture paste is still drying, I applied a few aquarium rocks, pushing them in with the end of a sculpting tool. I thought the front was still a bit too bland, so using a few more styrofoam rocks, I glued a small formation around the door, which would become kind of mini runestone things later on. And I blended in the gaps using another little bit of the texture paste. Once all of that was dry, I applied a layer of black gesso all over the model. This was followed by a base coat of umber brown. For the stonework and the rocks, I applied a mid-grey tone, but not to the point where it obscured the complete base coat. The next step to blend everything together was to apply a tan colour made from mixing the umber brown with white paint, using a very soft brush to pick out most of the detail on top of it, but applying a fuller coat on the walls where the plaster was, and a lighter coat where we had the turf texture, as well as going over the top of the brickwork just to blend it back and bring it into the same tone. To bring the stone back to a grey colour, using a very light coat of white paint to give an edge highlight, as well as pick up the details from the texturing earlier. I also applied some watered down white paint over the sides of the plaster, just so it would make them stand out a bit more visually from the turf below. To add some weathering, I took some watered down green paint and applied it over the wood as well as the stonework.
With most of the painting now done and dry, I applied a layer of matte Mod Podge over the turf, where anywhere I'd want static grass to be. So not going for complete coverage, but doing a kind of patchy pattern on top. Using a static grass applicator, and as always make sure you don't taser yourself, I applied a layer of green static grass onto the ceiling as well as the sides of the piece. Unfortunately the connecting wire inside the kind of cradle was not connected to the mesh, so at this point the static grass isn't actually being staticized. So I felt the need to cover a lot of it up, and I made a foliage paste with a mixture of a foam and a flock. Combining those together with some more of the matte mod podge to make this nice slimy paste. This I applied over the stone walls as well as on the top of the roof. I did want the building to be really overgrown so I probably did go a bit over the top with the foliage paste. I used a different type of clump foliage, a slightly darker colour, and applied that into some of the nooks and crannies as well. For some finishing touches I painted up some balsa wood beams as well as a kind of cow skull looking thing to apply over the door frame. Once painted, these got attached around the front of the house. I also drilled two holes in a small piece of plastic card to make a keyhole for the door. Finally, I threw a bunch of tufts at it, then applied them around the front of the base as well as the sides. And again, I probably went over the top here, but I wanted to kind of double down on that druidic feeling and just get a bunch of nature kind of pouring in and out of the house. It also gave me an opportunity to cover up a bit more of where the static grass had failed, as well as add a bit more colour around the house with some flower tufts. Moving on to the very final details, I applied a very thin black watered down paint over where the foliage base was on the front to mattify where some of the Mod Podge was still a little bit glossy as well as bring the colour back down into a darker gradient. Then with a fine brush and some white paint, I painted some Nordic runes onto the front of the rune stones. as well as over the door. With those final touches dry, I was happy to call it done. So yeah, I probably did go a bit over the top with the foliage and the greenery, but I also think it kind of goes to that druidic vibe. And if you cut a hole in the bottom, you can shove a tea light in there as well. But anyway, thanks so much for watching guys, I'll catch you next time.